Hello, my name is Jonas. In this video, I will show you how to add custom metadata and also attach a lot to your HDR video before uploading it to YouTube. If you haven't seen our previous tutorials about how to create HDR video, I suggest you check out my playlist called How to Create HDR Video. Those tutorials will give you all the information you need to get started with creating high dynamic range video. So let's begin. When uploading your HDR video to YouTube, there are different approaches you can take in regards to the management of metadata, which is needed for YouTube to be able to recognize the video as high dynamic range. In my tutorial, How to Create HDR Video, The Ultimate Introduction, I showed you how to use a color mesh workflow inside DaVinci Resolve, which automatically tags the video as HDR, or ST2084 PQ to be more precise. While this approach works, it's quite limited in regards to content specific information. And this is where HDR10 metadata comes in. Another limitation to this approach is that it requires YouTube to create its own automatic SDR conversion, which leaves the content creator with less creative control over the final result. I've done a previous tutorial about how to create a custom HDR to SDR conversion LUT using Dolby Vision inside DaVinci Resolve. In this tutorial, I will show you how to attach that LUT along with custom metadata before uploading your video to YouTube. To accomplish this, I will use the YouTube HDR Meta tool. To start, go to this YouTube help article. I put a link to it in the description below. The article contains some basic information about uploading high dynamic range video to the platform. It also contains a link to this GitHub page, where the metadata tool can be found. Here you can also find some information about how the tool works. To start, download the zip file. It contains software both for Mac and Windows. For this tutorial, I will use my MacBook Pro, which runs OS X. Unzip the file and go to the folder that is relevant for your operating system. There are two applications included, MKV Info and MKV Merge. We will visit MKV Info later in the tutorial. If you are in OS X, right click MKV Merge, choose Show Package Contents, and find the MKV Merge executable file in the Mac OS directory. This is the application used to create the actual file for YouTube. Now open terminal and drag the file over. This will give you the path to the executable file. Instead of writing all the parameters into the terminal window, I will create a text document using TextMate to make the process easier. On the GitHub page, you can see how the code is supposed to be written. Start by copying the path over from terminal to the first line of the text document, and end with a backslash. To clear terminal, press Ctrl and U. On the second line, start with a single dash, followed by an O, and type in the file name you want for your video, ending with .mkv. This is the output file. Ending every line with a backslash allows you to use a separate row for each command. In this tutorial, I'm going to use basically the same commands as those used in the example on the GitHub page. So I'm going to be lazy and copy them over to my document. I'm not going to modify these first options and just leave them as they are, which seems to work fine for me. You can read about all the commands by following this link on the GitHub page. The ones used in this tutorial are located in the 2.8 section called Options that only apply to video tracks. For example, Color transfer characteristics regards the transfer function, which in this case is the PQ curve, and should be set to 16, SMPT ST2084. Color primaries is here set to 9, which, as you can see, is BT2020. But since my video was graded in Rec 709, it has to be changed to 1, BT709. Next up, we have the max CLL and max FALL values. I did a video about how to generate these values in DaVinci Resolve. Check it out if you're interested to learn more. Here I'm entering the values I got from the HDR10 Plus analysis made earlier. Finally, we have the options related to SD286 which is Mastering Display Information, also known as Mastering Display Color Volume. 
This refers to the minimum and maximum luminance values of the display. Its RGB coordinates, here set to P3 primaries, and the white point, which in this case is D65. I don't know how important these values are, since we already have set the color space and luminance levels. Maybe it's more relevant when working in the REC 2020 color space, which even more expensive gradient monitors can't show in full. Anyway, I'm going to remove these commands for now. To attach the LUT, I'm going to be lazy again and copy these lines over from the GitHub page. I then drag the LUT over to terminal, copy the path to the document and end with a backslash. Lastly, we need to set the file path to the video file we want to use. Here I will also drag the file over to terminal and copy the path to the document. We are now ready to run MKV merge and create the file. Copy the code over to terminal and press enter to start the process. This might take a short while to finish. Once finished, the file can be found in the user folder. The new file contains a copy of the video together with the metadata. No transcoding has been made to the video. So if we had a ProRes video file, it will still be a ProRes video file inside the Matroska container. To review your newly created video file, you can use MKV info. Go back to the HDR metadata master folder and find MKV info. If you're on a Mac, right click on the MKV info file and select show package contents. Find the Mac OS folder and drag MKV info into terminal. Next, drag the newly created .mkv file into terminal and hit enter. You will now be able to verify the metadata under video color information. After verifying the metadata, your video is ready to be uploaded to YouTube. If you have thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.